<laughs> Welcome to Coding Adventures. I was just playing this piano here. Actually, more correctly say, I was listening to the piano because I'm not that talented to play the piano yet. But nevertheless, in this coding lesson, we'll see what makes this virtual piano implemented uh, in JavaScript make these wonderful sounds. So let's get started. <laughs> All right. So I'm back here into the coding editor. And uh, before we're actually discussing what makes that pi piano sounds that wonderful, uh, let's remember that uh, we have here in this palette some tunes, and we explored this when we built mini games in the previous streams. But however, the virtual piano wasn't using any of these built-in tunes, where the piano was using something called music in ABC notation. <laughs> and this is a very, very interesting way to add custom tunes into your JavaScript programs. And today we're going to explore uh, a little bit about uh, this ABC notation format. Um, and uh, if you are really passionate about this one, you can go deeper and study more about the format. All right, so uh, let's go into the editor and write a very simple instruction. Let's say play, and as a string, let's write C, just like that. <laughs> and let's run the program. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? All right, I hope you did. Let's place more notes here. Let's write C, D, E, F, G, A, B. <laughs> and let's run it again. All right. It sounded like a full octave on a piano keyboard, right? And uh, we can even play more than one octave. We can play multiple octaves and all just using one simple instruction, basically play. Let's, uh, let's add more to this one. So we can write now in lowercase the same string. Like that. Uh, C, D, E, F, G, yeah, G, A, B without C here. Let's listen. <laughs> it's wonderful. See, just by combining these letters, we are able to produce uh, like sounds that sounds like we are playing on the piano keyboard and can get even better here. We can play more octaves. So for instance, if we have uh, here after this one, let's write the letters with an um, uh, with a single <laughs> coat in here, like this. Let's run it. It goes even higher. <laughs> so you probably may wonder, what makes this program run? What are these strings that we are passing here? So let me answer your question. First of all, um, let me mention that inside this environment that we are using, codecapi.com, uh, it's integrated a wonderful library called ABCJS library by Paul Rosen. Actually, let me show it to you, that one. Um, ABCJS, Paul Rosen. It's uh, basically, yeah, this one. It's an open source project on uh, GitHub. So uh, if you are a little bit more advanced, feel free to actually go and study this uh, library. But for since we are still at the beginning level, we can use it directly in the environment here. Later on, when we're going to learn how to migrate from a codegapi.com to uh, bare metal JavaScript uh, applications, we can use that library directly. But for now, it's integrated so wonderfully in the environment that we need just one single command, which is play and then pass these letters as a string. Right. So uh, you may now ask the second question, but what represent this letter? How can we learn about this one? Uh, what we are putting here? Because this is more than coding. This is again, this is an, right now uh, talking about music notation. And what you can do basically, if you are really passionate about this uh, learning about uh, encoding music in ABC notation, you can Google ABC notation tutorial. And there are multiple swans uh, available on the internet. We can pick this one, for instance. And it's a really good one. Um, it tells you basically exactly what those strings represent. For instance, C, uh, I notated like C is middle C, a key, right? And then uh, the notes in the, the octave are 
this ones, this string here, exactly what we typed in our program. And see here, you can see how to encode basically to make different lengths of the notes and so on. So this is basically a lecture that you can do on your own if you are interested in uh, learning about encoding tunes. Of course, you also have to have a little bit of uh, music background, but let's say you are just focused on the coding and you don't basically want to learn at this moment about encoding these ones. What you can do, you can search tunes on internet and uh, there, is, there is a very good website, abcnotation.com. Let me visit it, that one, ABC notation.com and this website basically has plenty of tunes available for you just to basically grab them and play them in your code and you can search here for tunes it says it has this many number of tunes like this one for instance and you just copy it and play it in your uh, program uh, as a matter of fact, I already made a few selection, and there are other ones as well. Uh, the uh, another good one is the, the one from Campin, Campin uh, .me uk. Let's see if this is the site. Yeah, this is the one. So you can see lots of tunes basically encoded here in ABC notation format. So all you have to do is basically grab uh, some of this one, copy, and put them in your code. Right. So. Uh, have fun and discover new tunes on internet and they are very small as you saw. Um, and as I mentioned, I also made uh, <laughs> some selection uh, with some of these. So let's uh, select this one, which was the one played by the virtual piano in the beginning. And let's see how to encode this one in the code. Uh, because that string is more than one line, what we can do, we can basically use the other kind of uh, string notation that enables us to encode strings on multiple lines. like tick marks that we learned about in the previous lesson. So in between here, in between those codes, we just put the tune and now let's, let's listen it. <laughs> All right. Uh, actually, let's, let's listen to a couple more. Um, yeah, let's choose a big one, like this one. This one is encoded a little bit in a bigger string, but nevertheless, should not be any problem. We should be able to copy it. And we'll just pass it as a string argument to the play function, like this. Let's listen to it. What's great about these tunes is that they run in the background. So basically you can create complex programs. You can place other instructions here. You know, you can perhaps create a, a mini game and have this kind of tunes as a background music. Um, so the, I, I made this basically this selection from uh, those sources that I showed you previously. I will not share with this ones with you. Uh, I, it's still not clear what's the copyright, but feel free to browse those uh, sources. And they are very, very interesting ones there. Let's play uh, perhaps another one <laughs> just for fun. Uh, happy, we have a happy birthday here. We have uh, many other ones. Let's see if I have a very classical. Yeah, that, that one, I was looking for this one. A classical tune, small, encoded in a very, very short string but it's uh, well known by people of all ages as well. <laughs> all right. Uh, one more and basically I, I, I think you got the idea so feel free to explore those sites you'll have tons of fun you'll discover lots of lots of uh, interesting tunes you can make a collection out of them and use them later on in your program so let's pick this one and actually show it to you that we can incorporate this in a bigger program um, this should be jingle bells Right. 
will listen to it several times during this session. So perhaps we can create a very simple greeting card with this one. And the coding aspect is nothing new. We did this in the past, but uh, <laughs> let's uh, try it again. So um, we can create, let's pick up here some winter team, perhaps this one or any of these ones should work. Uh, yeah, these ones can work. Work the one with the icebergs that we chose last time. Let's pick a new one. Maybe this one. <laughs> we never use this one. Let's see how it looks like. So we're gonna pick this one and also let's pick Santa from here. And refer also to the previous lesson when we gonna we created this uh, those greeting cards with uh, animated characters and scrolling messages. For now, we just want to show that we can basically do this kind of uh, greeting cards with custom tune. Eventually, go in one of the previous lesson, uh, grab the code of one of those cards, and put this tune into that one. But uh, let, we'll build it from scratch. <laughs> and let's play Santa a little bit to the left and a little bit down at 5400 yeah perhaps a little bit down just like that and we can write merry christmas somewhere on the screen so uh, we can say uh fill let's write it with white no stroke perhaps we should increase the text size to 60 and write a text Mary uh, somewhere at four, 500 and 300 and Christmas now we are past the uh, holiday season here but uh, <laughs> but anyway we can prepare for the next holiday season um, and fonts are a bit small okay all right let's see yep <laughs> Let's put the, uh, this one at 200 and this one at 300 and a little bit to the left, not at 500, but perhaps at 400, just like that. <laughs> and we can also put the ear if we want um, at 400, 400, we can put 2022. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> well, we still have a little bit of uh, time. So let's practice a little bit more coding. Um, so this is a Christmas card, or let's say card. We'll save it. And let's see how we can basically make it snow, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> um, so uh, we can place first of all this one in in some loose function there um, we can but uh, we, we can refactor the program later on so uh, snowflakes let's um, let's have an array of snowflakes actually say have a function create snowflakes and a number here perhaps 100 snowflakes let's have that function um, here create snowflakes how many and what we're gonna do, we're gonna create an array. And we did this exercise in the past when we created that, uh, uh, yeah, that star field that was scrolling. So, and we or it's falling spider. So it's the same kind of uh, algorithm here. I plus plus, and then let's have a temporary array. And inside this array, we're gonna put a small object basically which is a snowflake and i'm not taking this in a separate variable i'm just putting the object directly in here so we're gonna put an x which is a random on horizontal i'm gonna put a y which is basically let me make it a random um all right we can make it a random in the um non in the upper part that is not visible up uh, outside of the canvas. Actually, let's make it a random between minus 600 and zero. And we can have also velocity or speed. Those snowflakes, maybe some of them go faster, some slower, something like that, uh, which is a random number between one and two. Let's not make them <laughs> rockets. All right, so we have the snowflakes here. Uh, we'll return the array. 
and let's have a function here uh, that we're gonna display the snowflakes uh, that can take an uh, array of flakes of snowflakes <laughs> so the way we're gonna display them uh, we can just loop through them let um, <laughs> snowflake of snowflakes we use the for of syntax on an array and for each of them we're gonna do a circle at x coordinate and y coordinate and the radius can be five perhaps or three something like that or perhaps we can also add to the radius also the the speed so <laughs> like bigger snowflakes can fall faster <laughs> so uh, something like that let's add also the speed and we're gonna make a function update that will take the same snowflakes and the idea is that we're gonna display in a loop first we're gonna display then we're gonna update uh, the snowflakes and update should basically increase the y coordinate down a little bit um, snowflakes so uh, let me loop again to them we could we can avoid having twice the loop but um, for now it's fine we don't have too many snowflakes and what we're gonna do here we're gonna in increase the x of each snowflake with its own speed that we selected and we can also say if the snowflake oh not x sorry the y coordinate right because they fall on vertical and then we can also say if the snowflake is greater than 600 so if it goes outside of the screen what we can do is basically recycle it and make it jump somewhere in the invisible area above so it's an, again a random number between minus 600 and zero somewhere there and we can make it also recycle the x coordinate somewhere but that should be fine for now let's have a function loop and inside the loop function all we have to do is basically display or display and then update i think what was the name just display and update yeah just display and update and we're gonna pass this array so this one displays the snowflakes this updates them let's run it <laughs> we have to clear the screen <laughs> and let's also have a function here um Actually, we can put inside the display to put also this text inside the display. Yeah, let's have this one inside the display function. So we don't have an, well, we can have another one. Function display text like this. We can capture because we have to invoke it continuously inside the loop because we're gonna, um, we're gonna clear the screen. So uh, we're gonna clear the screen and we have to invoke that one otherwise we'll lose it. So let's run it. <laughs> now what we can do, we can make the, uh, the snowflakes jiggle a little bit on the screen. So here when we are displaying them, instead of displaying them at the X coordinate, let's say we display them at a certain X. So x can be snowflake.x, right? But we can add to this this one, let's add it a little bit of a sinus movement to move from left to right. And we use the sign function and let's put here frame count. Now sinus is returning a number between minus one and one is too small. So let's amplify it with 20 pixels, perhaps something like that. Let's see. <laughs> they all move at once. <laughs> And let's also multiply here a 10 just to make the uh, movement a little bit faster. <laughs> it's not... <laughs> it's kind of irrealistic. So instead of frame count here, what we can have, we can have its own uh, X position perhaps, sinus of its own X position. Let's see how it looks like. It's so we cannot see it here. So maybe we can. Um, uh, we need to. If we don't amplify it by ten. We amplify it by bigger value. Anyway, from now on, it's just tuning the program. 
yeah uh, oh because this is a constant so we need something that is um is not a constant well <laughs> we can have frame count for now we can have different variables basically for these ones or we can have frame count for now but remove that amplification so they will be a little bit but not that visible <laughs> it's like the wind is a little bit So that was all that I had for this uh, small mini lesson. I'm uh, waiting for you to join the other one where we're gonna discuss about the while loops. Uh, for now, uh, I, ha I hope that you have fun and if you're gonna build the uh, programs and if you are to explore more about the music in ABC notation format, I hope that you'll have fun as well. So uh, thank you for watching, happy coding and see you next time in the next lesson that will be will coming soon. See you.